Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time? Proverbs 20, verse 6. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Many a man proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy man? Uh, what version do you have? HCSB? HCSB. Ramon, what, what version do you have? Uh, right now I'm looking at... Uh, I'm, uh, looking at right now, okay. Rob Dama Dam Yikra, Ish Kasdobe Ish Emunim Mi Isha. Okay, uh, LEB, many a person will proclaim his loyalty for himself, but a man who is trustworthy who can find. Uh, King James, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And uh, I'll repeat Hebrew. Rav Adam Yikra Ish. So many a man, Adam, flesh nature, Yikra will call Ish, humanity, humanness. Ish and Adam are different. Chasdo, Chesed. You know, every man will, every, every, more like Rav Adam, all flesh will call, will proclaim, or cry out humanity's faithfulness. How many times have you heard stories, specifically being today 9-11? Look how there's good people. I don't doubt that. There's no one righteous, no, not one. But there are fingerprints of God throughout every one of us. There are. There are. And, and God uses that. He uses wicked flesh to proclaim his own glory. But many will, will proclaim humans' own goodness. Ve'ish emunim. Faithful emunim. This is plural. Faithful souls who will find. Go to Luke 22. Uh, I'll give you the Luke 22, 31. The message of this is are you faithful? Are you really faithful? Where are you proclaiming your own FS love? Simon, Simon. Now he calls, he doesn't call Peter, but Peter he calls him Simon. And he says it twice by his first name, not Peter, but by his given birth name. Shimon, Shimon, L literally, listen, listen, look out, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, he's asked to just make nothing of you, but I've prayed for you, so it's, as far as that's concerned, Jesus says it's done, I've interceded for you, that your faith may not fail, and you, not if, but when, you have turned back, strengthened your brothers. Lord, he told them, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter. Now, he changes his name. And how many times? Now, this is interesting. He calls him Peter now. The rooster will not crow today until you deny three times that you know me. The fundamental nature of Peter is the very humiliation of where... He came from. He says, Peter, what does he do? I'm proclaiming my steadfast love to you. 
Really? Do you really think you're able to stand? Go to 1 Corinthians 10. Are you ready to give your life to the Lord? Let me ask you. Let me ask you again. Are you really ready? Or are you just a good for nothing Christian? You will not be ready to lay your lives down for Jesus. Now, that could be like Nate Saint and the four others in Ecuador that were speared by the Akas, by the Wadani. Or John Allen Chow with a Sentinelese two year, three years ago, excuse me, because he gave his life. You may, you may be called to that. What about denying yourself? Loving your wife when she's having a bad day, she just can't do it anymore. Are you willing to put down your stinking pride and say, Honey, I'm sorry. You know what? Don't worry about it. Why don't we go out to eat? Why don't we just, just spend time. Let's watch a movie. Let's just put it aside. I'll clean up. Just go take a bath. You know what, honey? I'll watch kids. I'll take them out. Why don't you? Or what about you, you women spending time on the internet? What could it possibly give you that you don't already have in Jesus Christ. Do you understand you're being a busybody? I'm speaking, I, you know, we're all guilty. This is a message from the Lord. Many a man proclaim his steadfast love. You say you're faithful? What about time you could get hungry for Jesus? What about times when, you know what? I wonder how so-and-so is doing. I know they've been sick. I want to check up on them. My heart hurts for them. What about telling somebody... I'm praying for you. But what about the one next to you, a neighbor, or someone is hurting, or you can intercede for somebody who's an addict? What about the tears? We're, I love Wilkerson, where are the Sunday school teachers who we? Because they know of kids that are going to hell. Guys, it's not about keeping laws. It's not about looking good on the outside. Government intrusion this, COVID that, clean house this, obedient kids that. It's about, it is really stinking simple. You deserve punishment in hell. Jesus Christ pulled you out of it. You deserve to suffer here. Jesus Christ gives you strength beyond strength. An abundancy that you deserve nothing. The key, the, the thief will steal, kill, and destroy every resource that you desperately want to hang on to. And God says, I got a better way. Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, and you'll find rest for your soul. Stop trying it yourself. Stop it. Put it aside. Just fall on your face. Or are you like Simon? Many a man proclaiming his own. But I love you, Lord, and look how much I'm doing for you. Okay, Matthew 7. I'm sorry. I don't know why I should want to apologize, but Matthew 7. Did you say first thing you can I did, yeah, so we'll go back to that. First what? Matthew 7, verse 21. One of the most feared passages in the Bible. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, what? You call him Lord and Master. Really? Are you seeking his heart? Or are you proclaiming your own? Oh, look how, how much I've done for you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we drive out demons in your name? Do many miracles in your name? God, I obeyed everything your word told me to. I will announce to them, 
I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you. I was not intimate with you. You did not join me in suffering. You did not join me in, in success. You didn't know my heart. You didn't weep with me. You didn't break with me. You were not that guarded with me. You didn't identify with me in death. You didn't. I didn't know you. Get out of my face. Don't you dare call my name upon you. My wife calls herself a Tal Shahar, and so she is. And not just by name. What does it say in Isaiah 1? Seven women will strike. Oh, just give us your name. We will fend for ourselves. Is that what you're doing? Are you proclaiming your own steadfast love? Or are you suffering with him in the garden saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. My wife does take her, my name upon her. She identifies with me. I, uh, so I've been going through this unbelievable process of touching heaven and touching earth at the same time with Leanne's death. And she's with me. She grieves with me. She's like, honey, I don't understand this. God has sent me to you as your grief counselor. And I never once experienced death in my family. I don't understand this. And I said, but you are. Because you're intimate with me. You suffer with me. You cry with me. You laugh with me. You hurt with me. Ought we not do that with the king who died with for us? Or are you proclaiming, it? yes, Lord, I love you. I, I said, uh-huh, when I asked you upon into my heart. The demons believe too. And they tremble. But do you walk with him? Do you suffer with him? Do you cry out? Oh, yes, I love you, Lord. Yes, I, I am a Christian. I'm the true church. Yeah? Just watch. Just watch what happens. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 10. You guys feel the heat? It's, it's coming. Guys, do you understand? If you cannot walk with walkers, you won't run with runners. You won't run with horses. If you're not firm in your faith, you are not firm at all. 1 Corinthians 10, verse... Uh, we'll start at verse 1. Now I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were, wet, were all under the clouds, all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the same... Excuse me, in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual walk that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the wilderness. But well, we know this for unbelief, for not obedience, for not intimacy. Now these things became examples for us so that we will not desire evil things as they did. Now, and this is not just drug dealing, pimp, prostitute, the night clubbing, no, no. Our anger, coveting, unbelief, lacking faith. We don't want faith. It calls us to cost. It costs something. Faith is a seed. It involves your life. Run for your life. Run to Jesus. Do you not, do you not understand? He's calling you to greater and glorious things. He's saying, come. Well, Lord, I got stuff to do. Well, you know, uh, I mean, I, I just have your Bible. I can, I can just, I mean, this is fine. No. Come. Why don't we do as, pil uh, as Christian pilgrim and pilgrim's progress, putting his fingers in his ears and crying out eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. Now these things give examples. Okay, don't become idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to play. Let us not commit sexual immorality as some of them did in a single day, 23,000 people fell dead. Let us not test Christ as some of them did and were destroyed by snakes, venom, 
nor should we complain. What are you complaining about? I don't have it easy. Really? Why don't you suffer with Christ? Why don't you struggle a little bit? Why don't you deny yourself and do the hard thing and tell Jesus, thank you. Thank you, you don't have AC. Because you get to praise him in the heat. God, I got a leaky roof. Praise him because he had nowhere to lay his head. God, I'm bleeding. Praise him because he bled every last precious Jesus. Oh, woo! Every last drop for you and me. So that you can have fellowship with Jesus Christ. You can have fellowship with the everlasting Father. Some of them did were killed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as examples. And they were written as a warning to us on whom the ends of the ages have come. We're in the end times. I believe we're in the last minutes. Last minutes, folks. 144 untouched people group. People groups are left to receive the gospel. They believe by 2030, the whole world would have gotten gospel. We're there, guys. I believe Francis Chan quoted saying that the gospel is translated into every known language currently. Guys, we are in the end times. So, whoever thinks he stands, this is a warning. Stop proclaiming your own faithful love. Consider yourself an undeserving servant, Luke 17. You don't deserve anything. You're doing what the master bids. Let, you must be careful not to fall. No temptation's overtaken you except what is common to humanity. Guys, you're, you're prone to pride. Admit it. Just submit. Just submit to the... Before Leanne died, I struggled with admitting the fact that I was human. I didn't want help. I didn't want people to help me. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I didn't want to admit that I was broken. Guys, rejoice. God is faithful. You will fall. I'm going to tell you that right now. You will fall. You will fall. You will fall. How many more times? Three? Seven. You, yeah. Seven times. You will fall. Fall forward. Fall into the arms of Jesus. Fall into his arms. Fall into his arms. Daddy, I messed up. Daddy, I'm sorry. Daddy, I'm sorry. I wanted to control my kids and my circumstances. I didn't want Leanne to die. Daddy, I'm sorry. I didn't want help. Fall forward. Let him lift you and let him exalt you. And stay in that low place. Because when you're low, your arms are up. And when you are up, your arms are down. Say, uh-uh. No. Rejoice because God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. With the temptation. But with the temptation, he, he will also provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. Praise God that Jesus prayed for Simon, that we would not be handed over to the devil. We will deny him some way. We do. Guilty. When I was a new believer back in 2004, uh, my mom asked me if I got baptized. This was after my father's funeral. And I told her no. Later on, she asked me again, did you get baptized? I told her no. And, that, and, and I'm ashamed to, to say this. Is I am... I love Jesus. And I'm ashamed that I actually hid my faith. I was scared. I really was. I'm sorry. But then, the third time, just quietly, I knew God... I don't want to be like Peter. Please give me strength. 
and she asked me, did you get baptized? And I said, Ima, yes, I did. I love Jesus. He saved me. And she told me, I knew it. I didn't like it, but I love you. And for a time, it was okay. She's done with me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, well, it breaks my heart because she's going to hell. At this, at this stage, she's refused the message of life. Guys, it was a broken road for me. If you cannot, this is a warning. If you cannot openly, boldly say, I love Jesus and live for him and be willing to suffer the reproach with him outside the garden. Doesn't the Hebrew say that? Let us go before, let us go therefore with him outside the garden and suffer with him. Holiness, without which we won't see God. Pursuing peace with all men. Amen. Amen. Guys, Amen. go to dark Gethsemane Amen. and learn to die. She didn't want that. Amen. Do we not take him seriously and say, Lord, when he says, Satan has asked you to sift you, Satan has asked me, Jesus is saying, to sift me as we, what's your response? Oh, God, thank you. I'm so sorry. I don't even see it. I beg you to help me. That should be your response. God, I'm really scared. I don't know how to deal with this situation with this person, that person. Let me pull up. I'm going to pull up the... Go to Dr. Gethsemane. Feel the tempter's power. Your redeemer's conflict see. Watch with him one hour. Turn not from his griefs away. Turn not from his griefs. Learn of Jesus Christ to pay. Pray, excuse me. See him at the judgment hall, beaten, bound, arraigned. Hold the wormwood and the gall, the pangs his soul sustain. Shun not suffering and shame. Learn of Christ to bear the cross. Calvary's mournful, uh, mournful mountain climb, adoring at his feet. Mark that miracle of time, God's sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear him cry. Learn of Jesus Christ to die. It is finished, done. There's a persecution coming. If you cannot deal with it day to day, you are not going to deal with it. In the big time, when it comes time, you will not pass the test. When I was an apprentice, as a carpenter, they, the first, first year apprentice, they, they told us, if you fail the evaluations, then you learn nothing in school. You learn nothing in school, you learn nothing in the job site. You should pass it with flying colors. And that means we didn't do our job in teaching you, or you didn't work. Sadly, there was some evaluations. He said, uh, my one director, he said, I generally know who's gonna pass evaluations and who's gonna fail. I know within the first 10 minutes. He looked at me, I think uh, the first couple of evaluations, uh, lay a set of rafters and stairs. Don't ask me to lay stairs again. It takes some refreshing with rafters. <laughs> but he said, there as he passed. I was only in it 20 minutes. He said, don't worry about it. Be fine. Just do, do the rest of the work. I don't even need to watch you. He, said, he pointed to me. He looked at me and said, look at these guys. Broke my heart because I knew them. They were friends. He said, they failed. They don't know what they're doing. They're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's like the, the virgins, give us of your oil, give us of your oil. That oil is the oil of affliction. If you did not store oil of affliction, the, Christ, the sufferings of Christ upon you, and knowing to identify with him in death, because that's how you can understand resurrection power. Okay? This is not a woe, mournful thing. I'm not talking about self-flagellation for the sake of flagellation. I'm talking about 
to experience the resurrection power of Christ. You do not know what to appreciate unless you appreciate what you've lost. Christ's obedience, his learning of obedience, gained him the exaltation of being at the right hand of the Father in human form there. At being the Son of God, very God of very God. Jesus had to learn obedience here on earth. That's why God has exalted him. And I looked at my friends from a distance, just weeping in my heart, broken, saying, Oh God, have mercy. And I knew, and my director knew, they never paid attention in class. They never wanted to understand. They just wanted to die. Many a man proclaims steadfast love. Do you just want to be in the membership? Do you just want the name of Jesus, the name of Christian upon you? The name of, oh, I'm of God's people, Yah's people, Yeshua, Jesus, I, whatever, I don't care. Or do they know you by your fruit? Are you identified by his fruit where he can say, that's mine, I've engraven him on the palms of my hands. Can he say that about you? If he can't, you better do, you better do an audit between him and you. And you better say Psalm 139. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in a way everlasting. Please, search me. And don't hide a single thing from him. He already sees it. Stop playing fool. Because he already sees Adam. What are you doing? He didn't say, Adam, where are you? I can't find you. It's like a father looking at his child, you know, hiding behind a chair. You see the child right there. And the child really thinks. He's deceiving himself that he's hiding. I'm hiding, Daddy. You can't see me. Child, where are you? That's what God said. What are you doing? Uh, I'm hiding from you. Stop it. Who said you're naked? You should come out and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Learn from him. I'm sorry. I messed up. Father in heaven, let us not proclaim our own steadfast love. Father, if Jesus were to come now, would he find anyone faithful here on this earth? Jesus, search our hearts. Break us, break us, break us, break us, bend us. Destroy anything that's unpleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen.